so it's important to find out more about Robert Maxwell because he himself was a very, very interesting character. What do we know about Robert Maxwell? Oh, man. Well, I mean, we could fill up the whole podcast <laughs> talking about Robert Maxwell, to be honest. Really? Uh, but really, his intelligence connections are a matter of record. Um, he was uh, very closely associated with Israeli intelligence. He was also closely associated with figures in a Soviet and Eastern European intelligence to a significant degree, um, a, an alleged relationship with British intelligence. I mean, it seems like he could have been a double or triple agent, um, you know, very involved with intelligence stuff. And that's why it's complicated when we talk about intelligence affiliations. Oh, you know, people are like, um, you know, Robert Maxwell was just Mossad. Well, you know, it's more complicated than that. These people are interested in money and power from themselves a lot of times. So if it means, you know, you know, helping these guys out and helping these guys out, having your hands in as many pies as possible to rake in more money for you and stuff like that. I mean, a lot of these guys seem, seem to do that. And Robert Maxwell was definitely a guy that sort of seemed to not just straddle intel different intelligence agencies, but also intelligence and organized crime, which is another uh, big theme of, of the book. So looking at Robert Maxwell by the by the 19 around the end of the 1980s or so, he went into business with uh, Eastern Bloc mobsters in a big way. Uh, people like Simeon Mogilevich, uh, who, whose name has come up, for example, like when mainstream media talks about Donald Trump and the, mo the Russian mob and all of this stuff, it all goes back to Simeon Mogilevich, but they won't acknowledge that uh, he was a business partner of Robert Maxwell, and you have Donald Trump partying on the Lady Ghislaine, Robert Maxwell's yacht in, in the same period in the late 80s and all of this stuff. So is it really more of the Maxwell mafia or the Russian mafia, right? Uh, there hasn't really been an interest in connecting you know, those dots, right? And I think it's interesting, too, you look at Donald Trump's reaction to Jeffrey Epstein's arrest. He wants to distance himself. I'm not a fan, right? And then Ghislaine Maxwell gets arrested. I wish her well, he says. And people like um, that used to be pretty close to this nexus, like Stephen Hoffenberg, say that Trump was much closer to the Maxwell side than the Epstein side. From the from the father's side, Robert. Y yeah, and that it continued, you know, that his affiliation with Epstein and Ghislaine after Robert Maxwell's death, talking about Donald Trump, was because that he was closer to Ghislaine than Epstein necessarily. Well, let me ask you this. How, how was uh, uh, Trump's relationship with the Murdoch family? I'm not exactly familiar okay. with that, but but because uh, these guys were competitors, Maxwell and Murdoch were not uh, were competitors. Too fond of, yeah. yeah, but Trump's mentor was Roy Cohn, right? And so Roy Cohn had a friendly relationship with Murdoch. Got it. So and, and these you know, guys are going at it, and it, 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 this character Robert Maxwell could have been like a great great Gatsby character because he would tell the stories and half the stories you don't know if it's real or not but at that well, time yeah, sure. you kind of have he to was, believe it he right. was uh, he's been described as like narcissistic a very very big on self-promotion very you know he was determined to make himself and his family sort of like the next kennedys he wanted to make a, a dynasty of power uh, that was what he was interested maxwell. in maxwell robert oh, yeah. maxwell yeah. yeah and um one of the top fbi special agents in new york john patrick o'neill uh you know went on record saying uh that robert maxwell before he died set into motion a global coalition of criminals that he basically uh, made a major successful effort to bring together organized crime factions from around the world into like a global, basically criminal conglomerate at the same time that he's has all these intelligence affiliations. Wow. And that's pretty significant, it, right? It's, and it's that, a, mm -hmm. Keep going. Well, I was just going to say that O'Neill said, you know, if you look into that guy's career specifically, you know, he was sort of head on it to be head of the security at the World Trade Center. And he started just days before 9-11 and he was sort of pushed out of the FBI. But before he was... He left the FBI and he made these statements to author Gordon Thomas. He said, I have people looking in, try, still trying to unravel the Maxwell legacy in New York. And this is a decade after Robert Maxwell's death. You, wow. you got to realize uh, this guy was born, uh, you know, Czechoslovakia and Ukraine, yeah. right? And then uh, uh, his his parents and his four siblings get killed mm -hmm. at a uh, Auschwitz I don't know if it's a. I don't know if it was a camp, but they 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 definitely they, did die. But they were also pogroms and all sorts of right. stuff. Right, they lived, died they, in the hand of the Nazis. To have died. Yeah, yeah, they died yeah. in the hand. Mm -hmm. of, he fought against the Nazis for the British for the military, British. Mm -hmm. and so then later on he goes into wanting to compete in media, the whole mirror, and then you know he owned fifty one percent of uh, uh, MTV. It's kind of weird. This guy owned fifty one percent of MTV. Robert he owned fifty one percent of MTV. He was MTV. building a massive yeah, he owned media empire. Per, this guy's like a. Yeah. He, yeah. 51% of MTV, and then... This is Ghislaine Maxwell's father. Father, Robert, Robert Maxwell. Maxwell. So, and then uh, Ghislaine is the last child, the ninth the child. The youngest. Yeah. And, and his favorite, after the eldest son uh, is injured in a... No, the eldest son is injured. I think Michael Maxwell, he dies... 
uh, after being in a vegetative state for several years. He was the favorite child and had this you know awful car accident. And then Ghislaine, who was uh, Ghislaine was born around the same time that happened with her older brother. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the family basically it neglected her for the first like couple years of her life. And she developed like a childhood anorexia and stuff and had a lot of problems with feeling uh, even acknowledged by her own family, which obviously is going to have psychological stuff uh, implications for her obviously and then you know it doubles back and, it, and then she becomes the favorite child so you know you have that neglect and then no. you go to being favorite child oh. you know there's a and, and you sort of see robert the maxwell start there nine kids you saying um, i think it's seven okay so all these kids was it with the same woman and where were they all born do you know okay yeah all the kids. it was Me betty maxwell is the the wife and very complicated relationship there because robert maxwell was not faithful um, and doesn't seem like the kind of but, guy but who's she, a no, but she, guy. she was very faithful and very devoted. So, you know, yeah, I feel kind of sad for her to be honest. Um, but he was not faithful, but he wanted his children to be sort of like arms of his empire. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, but two of them are estranged, I believe. Uh, I forget their names. One went away to Argentina and the other one, uh, he was not very nice to a lot of his kids. Um, he was known to like verbally abuse Evan and uh, Kean and Evan, uh, sorry, Kevin and Ian. And then um, the the daughter that's estranged, he insulted her appearance a lot. And that might have. Pat, may have Pat is there any doubt in your mind that he was an intelligence asset, Robert Maxwell? I, I, I just started looking into this a couple of days ago because uh, it's all her fault. I mean, I literally just started looking into <laughs> Thanks, this a couple Whitney. days I'm ago. I'm not the and, first, though, with Robert yeah, Maxwell. Seymour yeah. Hirsch published a book called The Samson Option, Why Robert Maxwell Was Still Alive, Alleging a Relationship with Israeli Intelligence. And in, in Britain, the libel laws are very strong. So Robert Maxwell sued over that intelligence claim, and he did not win. Did not win. Mm -hmm. and, and by, by the way, here's So Seymour Hirsch was right. So we'll just leave that there. As far as I'm concerned, it's pretty... It's extensively documented the affiliation with Israeli intelligence. And 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 he names his yacht, the $50 million yacht he buys, Lady uh, Ghislaine. After his favorite child. After his favorite child. But it's a little weird, the relationship between Robert Very Maxwell weird. and Ghislaine. Right. For example, Ghislaine commissions pictures for the Lady Ghislaine, and some of them are a bit racy. What does that mean? Uh, I don't know. I mean, father-daughter relationship. Do you really want like a picture of your daughter with the skirt all the way up oh. here being like, eh. it's weird. You know, I'm not saying I know anything that happened between them, but I think there was a lot of psychological manipulation. And, you know, it seems like Robert Maxwell, at least in my opinion, was kind of narcissistic. A lot of narcissistic parents see no boundaries between them, them and their children. They see their children as extensions of them. Uh, he believed that Ghislaine was the most sexually attractive and the most like him. Right. So, you know, a lack of boundaries can mean a lot of things in that in that particular context. Right. Uh. And, you know, as I as I note in the book, uh, chapter 15 specifically, which is about all this stuff, um, it seems like he you, he was interested in using her sexuality for his benefit um, in, in, a, in a PR sort of way, um, like. Uh, for example, would publish stories in his own papers of alleged affairs of his daughter with elite people, uh, you know, aristocrats in Britain and stuff like that. Uh, even though, you know, the British uh, elites that he would name were, you know, denied any sort of a romantic relationship. Robert Maxwell obviously wanted that out there. And this is the same guy who with Ghislaine's, you know, boyfriends when she was in high school, didn't want them near the house, didn't want her to date, you know, was very controlling of her romantic life, but at the same time would publish, you know, basically mm -hmm. gossip and smutty gossip in his in his newspapers about her. I can see most dads not wanting, you know, your teenage daughter yeah. around. But he boys. wanted her to marry a Kennedy. That's what he wanted. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Can we see he a picture, to build Tyler, a of a young dynasty. Ghislaine Maxwell? We all know what she looks like now, but young? Yeah, and, and after, uh, no one knows how he died. Suicide, you know, There's what happened There's a lot of him? allegations, yeah. but let's look at what Ghislaine Maxwell says. Ghislaine Maxwell believes that he was murdered by rogue Mossad agents and the Sicilian Mafia. That's what Ghislaine Maxwell thinks happens to her father. When does she say that? Uh, I think it's quoted in the New York Post somewhere. Um, I cite it in the book. She says uh, he was murdered because they, they, you know, the other children claim not murder, but she thinks she was she was the person who, according to British journalists, when he died, she was the one that came down out of all the siblings, right. came to the yacht right after his death, goes on the boat and shreds papers. So that means out of all the kids, if that's true, out of all the kids, she knew what was incriminating and what was not where it was and what to shred. Yeah. And by the way, when he dies, you know who his yacht goes to? His yacht goes to Murdoch's third wife. 
How interesting. Rupert yeah. Murdoch. It is interesting that's, in the story. That's the part where it's a very, very connection of wanting to compete in media and how uh, this well, guy... Well, the, the Murdoch-Maxwell stuff was pretty intense, that competition. Uh, Murdoch drove Maxwell insane. Yeah. Looks at things. Just he, was, he apparently was willing to stretch his business empire, you know, as far as he could just to try and stick Murdoch. In the eye, <laughs> uh, and, and that, that includes using four hundred sixty or four hundred forty-six <clears throat> million dollars of his employees' retirement plan. Yeah, I know. Yeah, did you hear he, this? He the pension ahead. fund for yeah. the for the mirror. Mm-hmm. He used his employees' pension f- fund to finance what he was doing with the media company, four hundred and forty-six million dollars, and the employees ended up only getting half of it at the end after he died because his sons i think kevin and he didn't leave any he didn't leave any leave any, any of his money to uh, Ghislaine. he felt it was appropriate to only well, leave it to the boys they, or something like they that they have trust in Liechtenstein. no one knows about all right and the fbi special agents looking at this stuff in yeah. new york you know Ghislaine apparently came and made this show wearing like rags and like sobbing like dirty being like i have no money blah, 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 but they didn't believe her and they were trying to find about all these trusts and stuff that, he, you know, he he was what Jeffrey Epstein did with money. Robert Maxwell was even better. So he right? so he so who knows really where the money went? We don't really know. A lot of the the maze of Robert Maxwell's funds, a lot of it is honestly still a mystery. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.